taken into a back room with just a single lamp flooding the darkness. You realize your powerlessness. In the hands of the Gestapo, in the remotest of concentration camps, your fate is in their hands. What do they want? Everything you know. Who your handlers are, where and how long you've been deployed, your code names and terms, and most importantly, everything you've learned of the Nazi war machine. Yet this is the Gestapo, and you are in the bowels of a site designed for atrocity. They will take their time with you, inflicting the worst of physical pain. The Gestapo are there to break you, should you live to tell the tale. This kind of barbarous treatment was the kind of risk any female spy in World War II ran. Yet their accomplishments might just be part of the reason the world is a free and safer place today. Welcome to History on Fleek. Today we examine the stomach-churning Nazi torture of female spies. In World War II, female spies were indispensable to the war effort. Their role in intelligence and espionage operations was vital for both Allied and Axis powers. Be it gleaning information on the enemy, their weapons, or their strategy, female spies had their own parameters and possibilities in espionage. They could blend into the environment more so than their male counterparts, and could also apply charm and feminine wiles they lacked. Typically, female spies of World War II worked in pairs or groups, upping their chances of success. In field operations, these female spies would concoct and use their own secret signals and codenames for communication between one another and their handlers. Like in many, and in some eyes any, a tale of women in power, female spies were an uncomfortable fit for the male-oriented world of war. Their significance and power in the war effort were seen by many as a threat to societal norms and traditional gender roles. Yet dangerous work it was, and the consequences of being rumbled as a spy were severe. Regardless of the side they were spying for, a female spy could face torture, imprisonment, and even execution should they be caught. How a caught spy was treated varied depending on the nation. While the British were lenient in their treatment of a rumbled spy, Germany became renowned for brutal treatment. The exact work of a female spy in World War II was dependent on which country they worked for and what the mission entailed. Generally, it was more reconnaissance through espionage work, gathering intel on strategies, troops, and their positions and weapons, then bringing the information back to their handlers. On the ground, in real terms, this could mean a female spy undercover as a civilian or service professional, be it a seamstress, maid, or clerk who could garner information from small talk with decided targets. Ultimately, the work was extremely dangerous, and this wasn't lost on the chain of command. Many saw female spies as particularly vulnerable to propaganda and their in suspicion, and they did face specific risks as female field operatives. Be it discrimination, harassment, or the need to stay undercover under the pressure of either or both, female spies had additional risks to espionage that men did not. However, many women took on these challenges and risks. Their dangerous spy work was done with a sense of duty and desire to be a tangible part of the war effort. Wars are often glorified after the fact through a lionizing of the participants. Typically, the champion figures are men. However, the World War II story is littered with several cases of famed female spies, some of whom have become near mythic figures. Noor Anayat Khan was a British resistance agent stationed in France for the Allied Special Operatives Executive Organization. Khan worked as a wireless operator who transmitted intel back to London from occupied France. Khan was trained in London and would work under the codename of Madeleine as the first female wireless operator to aid the French resistance. Though sadly, Khan's story would end tragically. Following a betrayal, she was captured and arrested by the Germans. In 1944, she would be transported to the Dachau concentration camp, where she was executed. Posthumously, she was awarded the highest civilian honor for gallantry, the George Cross for her service. Virginia Hall is a name that has found a place in the popular history of World War II in the West, and rightfully so. Hall was an American spy, also stationed for the SOE in occupied France. Her success as a spy is as unparalleled as it is remarkable. Known as the limping lady by her German opposition, 
Hall lost a leg in a hunting accident before the war, yet only made it an asset in her undercover work. Hall was something of a chameleonic master in taking on the guise of an elderly peasant woman. This only aided by her mannered gait. Yet Hall's contribution to the war effort can't be understated. She was seminal in establishing a sprawling spy network for the French resistance, without which the Allied invasion of Normandy could not have taken place. Another famed female spy of the Second World War was Kristina Skarbek, the Polish spy, was an espionage operative for the SOE in France and her native Poland. Her efforts were key in establishing an intelligence network in beleaguered Poland. Later in the war, she worked as a courier for the resistance in France, known as the bravest of the brave to some. Skarbek would survive the war and became a British subject in December 1946. Sadly, Britain's most glamorous spy would be stabbed to death by a spurned suitor some six years later. One of the fated females of World War II was Josephine Baker, an iconoclast. Baker was the first black woman to star in a major motion picture before the war in 1927. Baker was known as the Creole Goddess and the Black Venus in Paris throughout the Roaring Twenties for her sensational erotic dancing act. Yet, despite a reputation, career, and life made, Baker stepped up to the plate and worked for the French resistance in the Allied war effort. Using her status as an entertainer, Baker was able to travel across Europe's neutral nations while simultaneously transmitting intel and information back to allies in England and France. For her unique and brilliant contributions to the resistance, Baker was awarded the Croix de Guerre by the French military following the war. The worst fate that a female spy could suffer in World War II was capture. The consequences were extreme and likely resulted in torture, if not death. In general, female spies were dealt the same treatment as male spies when caught. It wasn't great. A female spy captured by Allied forces stood better treatment than those captured by Axis powers. But don't mistake this for accommodation. Imprisonment was a certainty, and execution was far from impossible. Many female spies captured by the Allies would be given prison sentences and were likely to be used as bargaining chips in POW negotiations. A female spy working for the Allies faced a different outcome should they be captured, in particular being left in the hands of the Gestapo. The German secret police force developed a reputation for their callous treatment of female spies. Torture was the Gestapo's wheelhouse, and they served up some of the most extreme for female spies. Physical torture was a prime tool of the Gestapo to break those trained to be unbreakable. Alongside this, psychological torture was consistently used to break the spy in question and garner their secrets and information. Probably the most famous instance of a captured Allied spy being left in the hands of the inhumane Gestapo belongs to Noor Inayat Khan, having been betrayed by a French collaborator. Khan was taken and tortured by the Gestapo across several prisons before being taken to the Dachau in 1944. She would be executed at the site of much atrocity, yet Khan did not reveal a single shred of information despite her barbaric treatment. Sadly, Khan was not alone in this dark and tragic outcome. SOE agents Odette Samson and Violette Zabo would also be captured and taken to a concentration camp for torture to break them and gain their secrets. Odette Samson would survive her ordeal, but Violette Zabo would not. Her ordeal at the Ravensbrück concentration camp would end in her death. The extremity and harshness in this treatment of female spies only highlight and embolden their sacrifice and bravery in the risks they took during wartime. So what did all this female spy work lead to? Sure, they helped the underground French resistance following the fall of Paris, and they worked for the British intelligence, but without wanting to sound dismissive here, didn't those guys need all the help they could get? Sure they did, very much so, but the impact of spies gathered intelligence on the overall war's success is breathtaking. Here are just some examples. Operation Overlord, or D-Day, or to more younger viewers, the opening of Saving Private Ryan, was nearly entirely reliant on spy-gathered intel. The June 6, 1944 invasion of Normandy only stood a chance of success with the best possible intelligence gathered by spies, most for the SOE and many of whom were female. 
It's hard to overstate just how important the invasion of Normandy was to bringing World War II back into the Allied forces' hands. It's nearly impossible to imagine the war having the same outcome without Operation Overlord's success. The story of weapons and technologies is as prevalent in World War II as any other. One of the most significant tech stories of World War II was the development of V-1 and V-2 rockets by Germany. Intelligence and information on the V-2 rocket programs were gathered by Polish spy Christina Skarbek, who gathered the activities and locations of the factories producing them. This information was invaluable to the Allies, who were then able to conduct bombing raids and other further sabotage operations. Last but not least would have been the intelligence efforts surrounding the invasion of Italy, one of the last bastions of combat in World War II. The Italian theater of war did contain some of the Atlantic theater's fiercest battles. I'm looking at you, Monte Cassino. However, before the combat in Italy, Allied forces needed to make their way through the country, starting with the invasion of Sicily. Codenamed Operation Husky, air and sea landings descended upon the southern shore of the island. It's understood that this would not have been possible without the critical transmissions from British spy Nor Anayat Khan. It should go without saying, but without the invasion of Sicily, the invasion of Italy could never have succeeded. Quiet, anonymous actors working away in the background are often difference makers to the bigger picture. Not asking for fame, validation, or credit, their gallant efforts are for the good of the whole, done only with a sense of duty, and what we owe them is barely imaginable. This is History on Fleek, and we'll see you next time.